Hello, today we'll be designing a pure footing in clear calcs. So we are designing based on US standards as per IBC 2018, and we'll be taking a look at this example here. So this example is trying to design a deck and it is to be 10 by 20 feet. So that'll be a total of 200 square feet. It is to be attached to a house along the length and supported by two pier footings on the opposite side. So reading the text here, we are trying to support 40 pounds per square foot of live load. So that will be for people and furniture and the dead load, which is the weight of the building materials is going to be 15 pounds per square foot. So if we determine how many pounds each post has to support, we can draw a line across the middle and we'll see that 5,500 pounds of load is being transferred towards the house. And then the other 5,500 is being transferred towards both piers. If we divide that again along this dotted line here, we can determine exactly how much is being transferred to each individual pier. And that will be 5,500 divided by two, which is 2,750 pounds. So if we scroll down and keep reading, we can see that they want to design a deck with a 20 inch diameter footer, and it's using a four inch support post. So let's go back into ClearCalcs and see how this looks. Our pier diameter is 20 inches and the embedment depth is actually being calculated based on D minimum, which if we scroll down here, they solve for that value as per IBC equations, whether or not we have an effective VS or our design is constrained or non-constrained. So we can just leave that as is. I am good with using D minimum for this design. The height of the pier above ground um, is really only used to calculate the total volume of concrete and the self weight. So by default, this is just one foot. And here we can see in our diagram that it sticks above ground by one foot. Um, setting this to zero would mean that the pier is completely buried, but I'll just leave it at one foot for now. The lateral constraint at the ground surface um, are Example didn't indicate anything about floorings being placed around the piers, so we'll leave it at non-constrained. Our concrete strength is defaulted based on a normal weight classification. Um, again, there was no indication that this would be a lightweight concrete in the example, so we will just leave this as is. And our post was rectangular and four inches in both breadth and thickness. And for the allowable soil gross bearing capacity, right now it is defaulted assuming that we are designing in clay. So we'll just leave this for now and see if this needs adjusting. For the applied loads, if you had a lateral load applied at the height of a deck, we could indicate the height of the deck here and that will be above ground surface. Um, but since we don't have a height of the deck in our design, we will just use a vertical load and apply that as since it's being transferred through the column. So for our dead load, we had 15 pounds per square foot and we'll multiply that by 50, which is the um, 200 square feet divided by four. So if we go back to our diagram here, we can see that it's a quarter of the deck. Um, and that's where we get the 50 from, and that's where we get 750 pounds in the dead load. We'll do the same for the live load, so 40 times 50. And if we add the two, that is where we get the 2,750 from in this diagram here. So if we go up, we can see we've inputted all of our designs from the example, um, but our design fails in vertical bearing pressure. So based on this example here and this calculation, it's being checked by QS over QA. So QA is actually defined based on the soil. So potentially our project isn't being made in an area where there's clay. Maybe we have sandy gravel at 4,000 pounds per square foot. And that allows our design to pass and our checks would be good. Um, but maybe we actually are designing in a clay area and we do need to keep that at 1500 
Then we'll look at QS. This is being determined by PS over AG. So if we look at our ASD load combinations, we could see that PS is the governing axial load. Um, and this is being defined based on our applied loads that we defined earlier. So we can't really change that, um, but we can change AG, which is the gross area of the pier. We can change that by adjusting the pier diameter. So let's try increasing it by two inches. We could see that our design now passes at 98% utilization, um, but maybe we want a more conservative design so we could use 30 inches instead and we can see that our design passes. Um, so that, that's how you design a pier footing in ClearCalc. Thank you for watching.